Hi, I'm Gina. Today, I'm going to be walking you through AIP's control flow loop functionality. What this allows you to do is take a list, and then for every element of the list, you're able to, say, transform it or apply ontology edits. Now, for this example today, we're going to be focusing strictly on applying transformations. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. By the end of this exercise, you're going to end up with the following function. So we start with an array of animals, where each element, of course, is an animal. We convert that animal array into an animal list. And then we use AIP logic's loop functionality from control flow to go through the list. And for each element of the list, and for each element of the list, we call a large language model on it to classify the animal's genus. Now, when we try this out and try it out on a couple different animals, so maybe golden lab, bobcat, and arctic char, and hit preview run, you can see here that we're actually looping through three different inputs and returning a list of outputs. So canis, lynx, and salvolinus. And that's what we're going to be building. Now let's get to it. From wherever you are in Foundry, you're going to hit Control J and search for AIP logic. Now you're going to click on AIP logic. Now here we are in AIP logic and you're going to hit new logic. And you're going to call this one. So your name, loop transformations. And now we're going to hit save. Now here we are in AIP logic. In this exercise, we're going to be focusing on control flow. Now, specifically, we're going to be looking at loop. Note that under control flow, there's also conditional, but we're sticking to loop for now. Now, when you're looking at the loop control flow, there's actually two things that you can do here. So as always in an AIP logic function, you can either produce something like a string or an array or an object or some sort of output, or your output can be ontology edits. Now for the loop functionality, that's also true. You can do transformations on input data and return data outputs, or you can do an ontology edit at every iteration. Now for this demonstration, we're going to be focusing on transformations specifically. Now note that in order to use the control flow loop, you have to have a list. Now, how you get that list, there's a couple of ways to get there. And an easy way to get to a list is to start from an array. And so that's what we're going to use as our input. So from here, we're going to add our first function input. And so we're going to hit add function input. So what we're going to do is we're going to be passing in an array of animals into a language model. And then using the language model for each animal, we're going to be identifying its genus, which is one of the taxonomic levels in species classification. So first, we're going to make our input array. And so here, I'm going to call this animal array. And the type is not going to be a string, but an array of strings. Now, note that in order to use the loop functionality, your input itself does not have to be an array. It just eventually has to be a list. And so an array is just the easiest way for us to get there. So that's our input. And now we're going to hit Control Flow. And we're going to choose the loop option. So you're going to click on Loop. Now, the elements that we're looping through, that's going to be our input array. So we're going to click select a variable and we're going to have animal array as an option. Now you'll see here, if you hover over this sign, you'll see this variable will be automatically converted using an array to literal list block when selected. So when you click on it, it's not going to be any surprise that we see this block pop up array to literal list. So it's taking that array and converting it into a literal list. So let's rename this just so we know what we're looking at to animal list. And so here we can see that also the elements have been renamed to animal list. So now this is where the loop begins. So it's going to say for each element or index. And now at this point, we can rename the element or the index so that we better know what we're looking at. And so I'm going to rename this to animal. 
just, just for better clarity. Now, at this point, we can do a lot of different things. We could do different types of data transformations. So all of these different data transformation options that we have in AIP logic normally, you have available in the loop. We could do a semantic search. If we had a corpus of documents that we were interested in, we could do another control flow. We can also do ontology operations, which will be another video. Now for this one, we're gonna use the use LLM option. So here we're gonna hit use LLM. And I'm gonna rename this block to classify animal into its genus. Okay, so here we're just gonna set up a very basic prompt. So based on the animal that you are given, respond with just the genus of that animal. Now, that's a system prompt. Now we have to fill the task prompt. So in the task prompt, we're gonna say, okay, so the animal is, hit a forward slash, and it's gonna be animal, which is the element in the list that we're iterating over. So let's try it out. So I'm gonna hit add value, and I'm gonna add in a couple of different animals. So I'll do a Siberian Husky, a palace cat, and a goldfish. And so now I'm gonna hit preview run and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna hit preview. And so here we have the genuses for the input animals. And so you'll see here, we have a list of those responses. Now, why are we using the loop functionality here? Why could we not just pass in an array of animals, feed it into the language model and get out an array of genuses? The answer is we totally could. Now for a simple task like this, it's kind of a no brainer. We could just do it in one fell swoop of the language model and it might be simpler. However, as the tasks get more complicated and the list grows much larger, we might start to see degraded or inconsistent performance. And that's why looping is gonna really help us out here. The other thing that looping does is that a large language model can handle an array just fine, but many operations are only designed to handle one value at a time. And so that gives us a lot more freedom and flexibility over our transformations. Now, before you finish, don't forget to save and publish. Select an ontology and then hit publish. And now you're ready to go ahead and use this function in applications like Workshop. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what you want to see next in the comments.